All right, so the other thing I want you guys to practice. Okay, so here's some hand technique stuff that I want you to practice while you're stuck at home, okay? Now remember all the things that I've taught you up until now. You want to make sure that you're getting a good bounce from your stick. So I don't want all this just tight gripped wrist motion type stuff. All right, try to get away from doing this. Relax your hands. Notice the open space in my hand right here. Should be that way on both hands. Remember that you're gripping at the flag if you've got Vic Firth sticks, but if not, wherever the stick bounces, grab right there between these two fingers, okay? And then wrap the finger, the other fingers, these ones, around it and flip it over. We're primarily using the German grip with the thumbs on the side. You can use the grip, the thumbs on top, which is the French grip, but just know that you're doing it when you do it, and that your fingers are coming underneath, and you're bringing your sticks a little closer together. If you tried to do German grip right here, it would feel weird because you're too close, your wrists don't want to move that way, and if you tried to do French grip out here, it feels weird because your wrists don't want to move that way. That's why the, the two grips were designed that way. German grip feels better this way, and French grip feels better right about here. All right, don't worry about traditional grip. Okay, I don't really use that very much, and so I don't teach it, and technically I would be using it this way with my left hand um, if I were going to use it because I'm right-handed but I don't. It feels better for me this way, which really serves no purpose, so I just don't do it. Um, all right, so back to getting, all, back to a review on all the things that we've learned. So I reviewed this with you. I want to make sure that you're getting a good rebound. Notice that just throwing my stick down, the stick is automatically bouncing back up to my hand. when I did that tighter, faster double stroke roll, it looks like I'm closing here, but I'm really not. I can always put a, at least a stick in there. It's not like, like with all this muscle getting tense. It's not like that. Otherwise, it wouldn't sound like that. Okay? Now, while you're stuck at home, make sure that you review every day all of your rudiments like the single, all the different variations that we've done, like just the four stroke roll, for example, left, right, left, right, with an accent, your flams, Remember that a good way to practice that is where you take the accent out and then put it back in. You can do that with your roughs as well. Focus, focuses my attention on just doing this motion and it also doesn't have to be this high. The reason I say that to you guys is because usually when you make your stick this high it winds up sounding really loud. It doesn't need to be loud. I can do this and still make a medium volume sound. I can even make a quiet sound. You know, it's just about control. All right. All right, cool. So those are your flams. 
Also, your doubles. Notice again, the motion is the same as for a single stroke. As far as the wrists go, now remember we've talked about the technique here. Where you're letting your fingers grab the stick on that next, that last hit, that last stroke. So it's a bounce, and then... like I'm doing it when I play it fast, but I guarantee you my fingers are doing this, you know, like they're moving up and down like that, okay? That's another thing to keep in mind is that when you start to go faster, all of your techniques kind of go from being really obvious movements to smaller movements, but they're still happening, okay? They're still happening, they're just happening in a smaller increment. Cool? Don't forget your paradiddles either. talked about with that. There's three different strokes that you're doing. You're doing the whipping motion, which has three parts to it. The whipping motion is up with your wrist. Notice the stick head stays down there. Then up, then down. So that's the first motion that gets you both of your accents. In between, the first stroke is, so the second stroke rather, you've got this, and then it's almost like the whipping motion because your wrist comes up, but you're just tapping as you come up, and then this, the last two strokes are just normal um, wrist strokes, like that. So you've got, okay, starting again. All right, and then you just reverse that. Remember, a paradiddle is just a mirror image, so you do the other thing. Okay, again. things but we've some of you we worked on some more complicated um, rudiments like Rademacue that was a double Rademacue so remember that with those all the same rules apply you need to have those larger movements Remember, you've got your big rudiments, and remember I've told you before, all your rudiments pretty much are made up of singles and doubles, okay? Um, you've got some, some decorations, I call them, like your buzzes. Try to get that in the shot. and go to a pressed buzz sound like that so it's a delicate balance between letting it 
play like that, 